Hello. In this video, we are going to derive the reduced form of the Berthelot equation, and then we are going to derive an expression for the critical compression factor for the Berthelot equation. We recall the following form for the Berthelot equation, that the pressure P is equal to R times the temperature T divided by the molar volume V sub M minus B minus A divided by the temperature times the molar volume squared. As a preparation, I now want to list the tricks, the techniques that we are going to employ in our derivation. The first property we are going to apply is that if I have the square root of x divided by y, and then I take its inverse, its reciprocal, that gives me the square root now of y over x. Next, we have if we take the square root of x squared, this simply gives us the positive value x. We can do this because all the quantities involved in the Berthelot equation are non-negative. Next, if we take the square root of y cubed, we can write, write this as y times the square root of y, where essentially we use this property to pull out a y from underneath the radical sign. Next, if we have the square root of xy, this is equal to the square root of x times the square root of y. And finally, we have that if we have the square root of the fraction x divided by y, we can rewrite this as a fraction, the square root of x divided by the square root of y. We recall the critical constants for the Berthelot equation. The critical pressure P sub C is equal to 1 12th times the square root of 2AR divided by 3B cubed. The critical temperature T sub C is equal to 2 thirds times the square root of 2A divided by 3BR. And finally, the critical volume is equal to 3 times B. We are now going to use the fact that the molar volume V is equal to the critical volume times the reduced volume V sub R. So now we can substitute that expression, 3B times V sub R, in place of the molar volume in the Berthelot equation. Upon substituting, we now get that the denominator of the Berthelot equation is now 3 V sub bar B minus B, because we substituted in the V sub bar times V sub C. And then for the right-hand term, we have A divided by the temperature times this quantity 3B squared, which we notice is the critical volume, times the reduced volume squared. And next, we're going to make some minor algebraic uh, simplifications in this expression. So this gives us that the pressure is equal to RT divided by P times the quantity 3VR minus 1 minus A divided by 9B squared V sub R squared times T. For our next step, we're going to apply the same principle, but now for the temperature, replace the temperature by the product of the reduced temperature and the critical temperature. Now, substituting in for the temperature, we have this expression. And we notice that the 2 thirds times the square root of 2a divided by 3br, this is simply the critical temperature. 3 halves times the square root of 3br over 2a. This is the reciprocal of the critical temperature because we have the temperature in the denominator here whereas we have the temperature in the numerator here. We can write that the pressure is equal to the reduced pressure times the critical pressure, and now dividing each side by the critical pressure, we get that the reduced pressure is equal to the actual pressure divided by the critical pressure. So the trick we're going to do here is we're going to divide each side by the critical pressure to get the reduced pressure on the left-hand side. So now we achieve the uh, practice of dividing by the 
critical pressure P sub C by multiplying by the reciprocal of the critical pressure. So that gives us our 12 times the square root of 3B squared over 2AR in front, and then it's multiplied, it's distributed over the expression for the pressure that we have in the first line. Now we distribute the expression in front over the first term inside the braces, and we get 12 times 2 is 24 divided by 3 gives us 8. And then we're going to use the uh, technique that if I have the square root of x times the square root of y, this is equal to the square root of xy. And in the process, we're able to cancel the a's, so we get under the radical sign 6b cubed divided by 6br times the expression that remains inside the uh, brackets here. So we have r times the reduced temperature, b times 3 times the reduced volume, minus 1. Now we're going to distribute this particular expression over the term here. And by multiplying this term by the radical term here, we get 18 times the square root of 9b to the fourth times r divided by 4a squared r. And then we still have our term in the brackets here, a divided by 9b squared times the reduced volume squared times the reduced temperature. And while this looks like we've made even more of a mess than we started with, at this point, we will now be able to simplify very quickly. We notice that b, if we pull it underneath the radical sign, is a b squared, the square root of b squared. So that makes that b cubed. The b cubes cancel. The 6 is canceled. Again, we same trick that if we bring r under the radical sign, it's an r squared. The two r squares are going to cancel. And we're left simply with the 8 in front, the reduced temperature. The b's have already canceled. So now our denominator is 3vr minus 1 for the first term. If we simply take the square root of 9 divided by 4, that gives us 3 divided by 2. And then combining with the 18 in front and the 9 in the denominator gives us a remainder of 3. The r's will cancel out. The a, if it gets pulled in the radical sign, becomes a squared, so the a squares cancel out. The b squared pulled under the radical becomes b to the fourth, so then the b to the fourth cancel. And we're left simply with 3 divided by the reduced temperature times the reduced volume squared. So therefore, we have derived the reduced form of the Berthelot equation. Since we now we have the pressure in terms of the reduced pressure, the temperature in terms of the reduced temperature, and the volume in terms of the reduced volume. For our final step, we are now going to calculate the critical compression factor for a Berthelot gas. We again recall the values for the critical constants P sub C, T sub C, and V sub C for the Berthelot gas. The compression factor Z is equal to the pressure times the volume divided by the gas constant R times the temperature T. So therefore, the critical compression factor Z sub C is going to be all these particular quantities at the critical point. So we have the critical pressure, the critical volume, and the critical temperature. So in one combined step, we've put all the different quantities into this particular defining uh, fraction. And so here we have P sub C, V sub C, we have R, and then T sub C. Our first simplification is simply to look at the leading coefficients. 1 12th times 3 is 1 quarter, and now we divide by 2 thirds, which is equivalent to multiplying by 3 halves, and we get 3 eighths, and we keep the rest of the radicals uh, unconverted so far. So then we combine 3b divided by 8r using the properties of fractions. And then we're going to use the fact that if we divide uh, a fraction, it's the equivalent to multiplying by the reciprocal. So we bring the numerator as it was before, and now we invert, we take the reciprocal of the denominator. So now that we multiply by 3br over 2a under the radical sign. So now again, we use the property that the square root of x times the square root of y is equal to the square root of x times y. So we just simply multiply everything and pull it under one radical sign. And now we notice that the sixes will cancel, the a's will cancel, the square root of r squared is simply r, so we can cancel out the r's. 
if we bring the b underneath the radical sign, this b turns into a b squared, times b gives us b cubed, so now all the b's will cancel. And we're simply left with the value of 3 eighths. So the critical compression factor for the Bertolo gas is 3 eighths. I thank you very much for your attention. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a good one.